For this exercise, we're going to use the Sample MEP project located in your Common folder. From the Startup screen, click on Open and browse to your Common folder and open the Sample MEP project. Generally, rooms are the preserve of the architect. He creates a room, supplies it with a name and number, and when you link his file, you can use portions of that data in your project. If you want things like room names and numbers in your project, then you'll have to place rooms in there rather than placing text. Also, if you want spaces to do some building analysis, you'll really want to leverage from the rooms. So just to start with, let's look at how those rooms are created. And we can do that in this file. In the project browser, make sure you're on level one of the architectural base plans. Here I'm actually going to draw some walls in this file, just so that you can see how the process is done. From the Architecture tab, click on Wall. It really doesn't matter what type of wall we're using, as this is just to show you how the process works. Here I've created a rectangular set of walls, and I'll place a couple of divisions in there, just so we can create three different rooms. Click on the Modify button, and then towards the right hand end of the Architecture tab, we've got the Room tool. Click on the Room tool, and just take a look at what's happening on the Options bar. Here I can specify an upper limit, so the upper limit of my room really wants to be level 2 with a zero offset. If I try and place a room, outside some walls, we'll get an error message. It tells me that the room is not in a properly enclosed region. But if I place it inside the boundary of the walls, we'll create our rooms. Notice how tags are also being placed at the same time, and this is due to the Tag on Placement button being highlighted. Once completed, we can come back to the Modify tab and come and select each room. From the Properties palette, you can see the properties of the room, its area, its volume, and its number and the name. And if I change the name in the Properties palette, the name in the tag is changed. So let's apply this to the rest of the building. First of all, I'm just going to undo all my last actions. We don't need it there in this project. Right click and zoom to fit. And then scroll in so that we can see the entire building. If I select the linked file, you can see these crosses denote where the architect has actually placed rooms in his file. This means we should be able to get the information from his rooms by placing room tags. So let's try that. We can either tag each room individually or all of them at the same time in this view. Let's try the individual option first. As you can see, I can go around and place the tag against the corresponding room. So this could take a little while, especially if this was a large project. So rather than doing that, let's try the other option. Click on the down arrow to select Tag or Not Tagged. Here we'll scroll down in the dialog box to find Room Tags and click on Apply. If I click on OK and come back to the view, you can see that absolutely nothing has changed. Let's try it again. Go back to Tag or Not Tagged. Scroll down in the dialog box to Room Tags, and then just above it, make sure that you include elements from linked files. Click on Apply. Click on OK. We now have all the rooms tagged in the view. I can edit these tags so they look like the way that I wish them to display, and we will be having a look at this in the Families section of the DVD.